Woodman Web Training, we're going to discuss alarm actions. Uh, this is a topic that brings your control system to life and allows it to interact with you when you are not sitting at your desk. Uh, we can send pages. Uh, there's all kinds of things the system can do towards printers and remote stations. Um, so we wanted to do a quick overview and show you how these kinds of things work and how to troubleshoot if they don't work. So we've already logged into my control system here. On, and you'll have to log in with an administrator level password so that you're able to see the tree on the left hand side and under services there's a service called the alarm service the alarm service has a whole, def a whole bunch of different things underneath it but what we're interested in today is the wire sheet the wire sheet is where the actions are taking place and where we're going to let things happen so as we've discussed in previous classes we have uh, a, several different alarm classes uh, we typically, on a Woodman system, come out with a default alarm class and a critical alarm class. And the critical alarm class, in our case, and how we normally do this, would be a critical class would be a f uh, fire alarm or a freeze tap, something you want to be aware of, something you want it to wake you up in the middle of the night. Um, that is, that's the kind of alarm we're talking about. So we're going to look over here. In every system we put out, there's already a customer built in. Um, and this customer, as you can see, is an email recipient. Now there's two ways that we can send out emails. Um, the normal way where you'd get it on your computer, but again, if you want to be out uh, on vacation or something like that, uh, you need it to be able to get to your phone. Um, and if you have a smartphone, obviously you can probably get email. But if you don't, or if you don't check your email very often, the easiest way to do it is doing it through a text message. Now text messaging is done the same way through the email service. Um, I've opened up a list here. Uh, this is just a simple website, emailtextmessages.com. Uh, all you do is put in your carrier. For example, I have a Verizon for a carrier. So what I would be sending my email address, or what I would put in there for my email address is my phone number at vtext.com. So we're going to enter me in here. And it's going to be uh, at v text.com. Now I'm going to receive that as a text message and then if I wanted to get it also if I wanted to also get that on my computer or my cell phone I could set it there or if I had a third address or something like that that I wanted to have in there I could put that in there as well. Down below here it's asking for an email account. Now this is an important part that gets missed um, on a lot of different systems and and what this is is the the tritium system needs to have a connection to an email server uh, that doesn't just mean a connection to the internet it needs to have information and know how to get to the email service so we're gonna come over here and look at this real quick uh, on the email service we don't have one in here right now so we're gonna add an incoming account there's a lot of information that needs to come in here, and this needs to come from your IT department, uh, coming down from uh, POP3, uh, whether it's going out as an SMTP or an IMAP or uh, whatever it is for the host name, port numbers, all that can be given to you by your IT department, and it has to be given to you by your IT department. Um, this isn't something Woodman or any controls contractor is going to be able to give you out of the box. As you come down to this section under email account, it's going to list the email account that you've entered in there with your IT group. The subject line, this is what's going to come in on the subject of your email, or this will actually be in part of the header part of your text message. Niagara alarm from, and then the data source data name, this is actually going to say your, your station name. So in my case, this would come in and say Woodman Ankeny. Um, and then the source is going to be, again, Woodman Ankeny timestamp is the last time this alarm happened, whether it's in alarm, not in alarm. Well, for example, some of the stuff, I may not really care about the alarm class or the priority. I can delete those out of there. Uh, and if you want to have any other information in this, you could say um, that uh, if it's a fire alarm, you could even give a message to that particular person, especially if that's a very, um, a very uncommon alarm that wouldn't happen very often and you want to tell that person what to do with it. So let's leave it at that and we're going to go on to another item. This is only connected to the alarms on our critical alarm class. 
our console recipient, this is what you're seeing when you log in and uh, look at the regular graphic screen. It's going to be the alarm summaries. And that we would want to have critical alarms, non-critical alarms, or any other alarm classes that are in there. Like we even have a testing alarm class, an alarm class for Dave. Um, this one, in this case, paging me in the middle of the night, I only want to know if there's something very critical going on. Now over here in the alarm, in the alarm uh, palette, there's a console recipient, which is what we already have. Now, we talked about this in a previous uh, training class. There can be multiple console recipients. So you could have one set up for a security station, one set up for a maintenance crew, one set up for an HVAC contractor. There could be multiple consoles that people might want to look at. The station recipient is used if you have multiple sites and you only want to log into one building and see alarms from multiple buildings. Printer recipient, just like you would think. Uh, you could select this to go to just critical, or perhaps you want this to be uh, just maintenance alarms. So in the maintenance shop, you have a printer that is just printing out a continuous copy of maintenance requests. The maintenance requests could be um, dirty filters or a fan failure alarm or um, runtime alarms so that you know when you have to grease uh, bearings or change belts. And then finally, line printer recipient. We frankly don't have a whole lot of line printers out there anymore, but if you have a... Uh, a line printer that you want to print out one one item at a time, one alarm at a time is kind of a running uh, rolled list. That's how you would do it there. Now, once you get the configuration and have the printer or station recipient or customer block on the screen and, and configured the way you want it, it's really simple to hook it up to what alarm class you want to monitor. So in the alarm output, it's simply a click and drag and now all my default alarm class alarms will be routed to this printer. So this printer is going to print all those items. If I want to print more than that, like I want to print the critical alarms as well, I can hook multiple lines up to that one device. So that's how you would hook up and have the printer recipient is now going to print all the default alarm class and all the critical alarm class alarms. It would be the same process for an email recipient or a station recipient. Uh, but in, as you can see, as how you configure them, you can configure them to go to consoles, email, text messages, and then set up different times of day for when you want those alarms to go. And you can set up uh, several different scenarios that would cover just about any kind of hierarchy or any kind of alarming system you might want to have. So if you have any questions, please give a call to Woodman.